హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు మనీ పర్స్ లెట్స్ లర్న్ సంథింగ్ న్యూ టుడే మీరు చాలా మంది రీసెంట్ టైంలో మన ఆస్ మనీ పర్స్ షోకి ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్స్ రిలేటెడ్గా చాలా క్వశ్చన్స్ అయితే పంపిస్తున్నారు మా తరపు నుంచి కూడా ఏదైతే మేము ఆన్సర్ చేయగలం చాలా వరకు ఆన్సర్ చేయడానికి అయితే ప్రయత్నిస్తున్నాం బట్ ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్స్ రిలేటెడ్గా రీసెంట్ టైంలో ఇంట్రెస్ట్ బాగా పెరిగేసరికి మీలో ఏదైతే ఆ క్యూరియాసిటీ పెరిగిందో దానికి సొల్యూషన్ కింద ఎవరైనా ప్యాసివ్ ఫండ్ ఎక్స్పర్ట్ని తీసుకొచ్చి మీకు ఒక కంప్లీట్ డీటెయిల్స్ ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్స్ రిలేటెడ్గా షేర్ చేయగలిగినట్టయితే హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అవుతుంది అనిపించి అనిల్ గిలానీ గారిని రిక్వెస్ట్ చేశాను తాను డిఎస్పీ యొక్క ప్యాసివ్ హెడ్ మూడు వేల కోట్లు ఏం మేనేజ్ చేస్తారు ప్యాసివ్ ఫండ్స్ ఎస్ ఎక్స్క్లూజివ్ ప్యాసివ్ ఫండ్స్ ఏం మేనేజ్ చేస్తుంటారు అనమాట తను అడగానే మన రిక్వెస్ట్ని యాక్సెప్ట్ చేసి మనకి టైం ఇచ్చారు తను ఈ సెషన్లోని మేజర్గా ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్స్లో ఇన్వెస్ట్ చేసేటప్పుడు మనం ఫాలో అవ్వాల్సిన బెస్ట్ స్ట్రాటజీ ఏంటి ఆ స్ట్రాటజీ గురించి షేర్ చేశారు అండ్ అలాగే ఏదైనా ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్ని మనం సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకునే ముందు ఫాలో అవ్వాల్సిన సిక్స్ రూల్స్ ఏమి చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ సిక్స్ రూల్స్ ఆ సిక్స్ రూల్స్ గురించి కూడా డీటెయిల్గా షేర్ చేశారు కేర్ఫుల్గా వినండి మీలో చాలామంది ఎస్పెషల్ ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్స్లో ఇన్వెస్ట్ చేయాలని ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్గా ఉంటారు కాబట్టి మీకు ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్స్లో ఇన్వెస్ట్ చేయడానికి ముందే ఒక గైడ్గా ఈ వీడియో అయితే హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అవుతుంది సో ఈ వీడియో బట్టి మీరు ఏదైనా ఇండెక్స్ ఫండ్ సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకోవడానికి అయితే చాలా ఈజీ అవుతుంది అండ్ అలాగే ఆయన ఇంటర్వ్యూ నేను మీకు ప్లే చేసే ముందు ఒక చెప్తాను ఆ స్ట్రాటజీ పార్ట్ ఏదైతే ఉన్నదో దాన్ని కొంచెం కేర్ఫుల్గా వినండి చాలా మంచి స్ట్రాటజీ నేను తెలుగులో కూడా వీడియో అయిపోయిన తర్వాత సమరైజ్ చేస్తాను సో దట్ మీకు ఇంకొంచెం ఈజీగా అర్థమవుతుంది ఎవరికైనా ఇంగ్లీష్లో కొంచెం టఫ్ అనిపించిన వాళ్ళకి అండ్ స్మాల్ రిమైండర్ ఇంటర్వ్యూలోకి వెళ్ళే ముందు ఈ కంటెంట్ మీ ముందుకు తీసుకురావడానికి మేము ఏదైతే ఎఫోర్ట్ పెట్టాము ఎఫోర్ట్ మీకు హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అయింది అనిపించినట్టయితే వీడియోని లైక్ చేయడానికి ప్రయత్నించండి చాలామంది వీడియోని లైక్ చేయరు వాళ్ళ గురించి చెప్తున్నారు సీ జనరలీ ఇలాంటి ఏవైతే వెబినార్స్ అవి ఉంటాయో వాటికి పెయిడ్ వెబినార్స్ కింద ఫీ తీసుకుని చాలామంది కండక్ట్ చేస్తుంటారు మన ఛానల్లో ఫ్రీగా అవైలబుల్గా ఉంటాయి మేము అడిగే జస్ట్ లైక్ మాత్రమే అండ్ అలాగే కింద కామెంట్ సెక్షన్లో అప్రిసియేషన్ అంతే సో ఈ వీడియో చూసిన ఏ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ టైంలో అయినా మా ఎఫోర్ట్ మీకు హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అయింది అనిపిస్తే వీడియోని తప్పకుండా లైక్ చేయండి అండ్ అలాగే మీ ఫ్రెండ్స్ అండ్ ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్ హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అవుతుంది అంటే వాళ్ళకి షేర్ చేయండి లెట్ మీ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ అనిల్ గిలానీ గారు నవ్వు హాయ్ అనిల్ థ్యాంక్స్ అలాట్ ఫర్ గివింగ్ అస్ దిస్ టైమ్ వీ హ్యావ్ ట్వెల్ ల్యాక్ ప్లస్ ఫాలోవర్స్ అండ్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ ఆర్ డిఐవై ఇన్వెస్టర్స్ అండ్ ఆఫ్ లైట్ లాస్ట్ ఫ్యూ ఇయర్స్ దెర్ ఇస్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ ట్రాక్షన్ విచ్ ఈస్ గెటింగ్ బిల్డ్ ఆన్ ఇండెక్స్ investing so many people though they started investing in sip mode or lump sum mode in index funds i'm sure they'll have lot of doubts so i thought uh, yeah, the session from you uh, would be very very helpful so that was the reason requested you for this session thanks for accepting our invite and i'm sure my viewers will get lot of data on index investing today most welcome uh, and uh, from my side it's always a pleasure to be with you on this channel money pers you are doing a great job in trying to enhance the awareness and explain to the investor in a very simple and layman language which is a unique thing so always happy to be here thanks anil let's start the session sure great so welcome friends uh, what i'm going to do is uh, to keep a very free flowing discussion but at the same time to have an anchor for the key subject matter to be covered i made a small presentation slide and i'll keep it flowing at the back end and i hope that uh, you will find it useful in terms of the content which we'll be discussing over there so i've just started with a very basic flow and the heading i've kept is cutting through the chaos like today as we just discussed all of you are very finance professionals you are having a broad understanding of key concepts of finance and investing and creating a personal finance portfolio investing for your life goals but still there is so much of chaos in the capital markets right today suddenly out of the blue some countries central bank decides to change some action we also get impacted some companies announce its results it has impact on overall sector overall capital markets so at some point of time how to cut through all of this chaos and make sure that you have a very good financial background and a good way to plan for your finance and for that today's topic about the growth of passive funds that is the index funds and etfs world over we have seen this phenomenon and how you can successfully implement and use them in your portfolio that's the key point so structurally if we look at it you know today what do we want in life you know what is our pursuit of happiness or what are your life goals basically you know very simple 3 4 5 goals many of us will be having very common okay yes uh, anil you know i'm having a good comfortable lifestyle you know but maybe in the next couple of years i have a vision to buy a new car yes wonderful some of you who are let's say in a job like me uh, who have some aspirational uh, area that i want to become an entrepreneur and i want to start my own business wonderful great idea or we buy a second home or maybe in another 10 15 20 years depending on or 30 years say i want to have a very good retirement you know so these four or five goals typically speaking could be the main areas which everybody is working on these are your life goals and the way in which we try to work towards them the way in which we try
you know what exactly i'm not able to understand you know a lot of discussions going on passive funds are rising yes okay but in very simple terms what exactly is the concept of passive funds is it in classic form of investing you know there is a fund manager there is a research analyst they do a top down bottom up research on stock by stock sector by sector and then they have their judgment or fund managers selection criteria based on which they will select some sectors and some stocks so this very famous movie you might remember called the kung fu panda and the panda who is the main hero uh, his father is having a restaurant where he produces a very he he prepares a very famous soup and he has always created the thing that there is a secret ingredient i add that which makes the soup very tasty so like that in active fund management there is a secret ingredient or a particular aspect of the fund managers analysts or analysts stock selection criteria whereas on the other side in passive funds like even in this movie later on the panda realizes that there is no secret ingredients it's your hard work your effort so in the passive funds also instead of having any secret sauce or any kind of judgment there is no human bias god but it focuses on overall buying the market so in passive funds there is no human intervention because of that there is structurally speaking low cost because less of research inputs less of analyst teams etc and at some point of time it has its own common way of rebalancing whereby certain companies get eliminated and new companies keep coming in depending on their performance and their participation in the overall capital markets and the broader ecosystem so what we feel is that in simple terms this is how we should look at what is passive funds and now let's see how it has been growing now globally friends if you look at the total assets and the management globally like if you compare the mutual fund and professionally managed money market of india japan united states europe all such put together total assets and the management aum is roughly about 100 trillion dollars from this passive funds means etfs and index funds are approximately 10% Now, mind you, this is overall world over industry. Now, if we compare similar size for Indian mutual fund industry, total size all of us as of last month end roughly about thirty nine lakh crores in dollar term. Let's say about five hundred billion to be as a broad ballpark number. From that, the passive funds, that is ETF and index funds, is close to about six lakh crores or approximately fifteen percent. So as we can see recently there has been a very good level of interest increasing in this category and now in fact we have overtaken in terms of percentage the size of the passive funds in the total industry of course in absolute term we are much smaller yet but in percentage terms just wanted to put out this point that the passive funds have outpaced the global average size and friends as we discuss these kind of global consultant firms uh how they have predicted the professional assets and the management is that in the next 3 to 4 years by 2025 the 100 trillion is scheduled to grow to about 150 trillion means massive growth potential in this segment and within that passive funds will be driving a lot of this growth so from the global average of about 10% or so they would have increased to about 25 to 30 31% that is what the global expectation has in been in india that 15% uh, includes everything right with government pension money and all this stuff yes. right so if we look at only retail flow that would be very very low right anil retail flow right now is very low yes absolutely right and to be very honest very similar thing we have observed in certain other markets also let's say for example japan market or in some other countries there has been a drive by institutional investors very often government backed or government administered entities like what we have seen in india as well but on the back of then later on retail investors also have started increasing the interest yes so the key take away what i'm trying to highlight here is that globally the passive industry has been rising on similar trends in the last about 5 odd years india also has seen significant rise mind you about 5 years back this number would have been very different india market was less than like you know 1 lakh crores of passive funds hardly 3 4% 5% of the total industry but in this last 5 years it has grown very fast so what we feel is that definitely it is something which is catching the interest of investors both retail as well as institutional yes. as of now in terms of the aum size it's large component coming from institutional investors but number of accounts or number of folios if we look at retail folios also has been rising very fast yes. over the last couple of years and in fact that was the reason i requested you because in comment section i get at least in a Absolutely week right. i get five ten questions on index fund investing so Absolutely right so whatever comments are coming up in our this video also we will endeavor to definitely respond to each one of them whether it's relating to or etf or index funds global as well as local context we'll try our best to answer your queries and bring you up to speed always money purse has been very much ahead of the curve in spreading this kind of information and awareness so now let's look at some of the key reasons why we are seeing you know one is of course people say that low cost 
I feel it's not just cost, but there are many other factors as well. One of the key reason is that what we have seen is that in the recent couple of years, the outperformance by active funds has been reducing. So if we see the last decade, means the decade from 2000 to 2009 period, during that period, if you see the actively managed funds, it's only a large cap category. So the active funds on an average, I'm not talking about one particular fund, XYZ or ABC, that would not be fair, but I have taken over here average of all the actively managed large cap funds. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have compared that with the Nifty 50 returns. And instead of any one point to point return, we have compared a rolling return, you know, a three year or a five year rolling return period. So if you see during the decade before the current decade, there has been a good outperformance, what we show as alpha means the yes. a mutual fund on an average have been able to outperform in a good way the Nifty 50, that is the broader benchmark. However, in the last decade, means 2010 onwards, we are seeing a marked change. And there are two, three reasons for that. Point number one is that the comparable has changed whereby earlier large cap funds used to have different definitions of what all stocks could be considered large cap. So some fund house would say, okay, okay, in my judgment, X number, let's say uh, 1 lakh crore and above is large cap or some component, let's say top 200 stocks is large cap, different, different definitions for different people. Then SEBI has come out with a clear cut categorization of the funds that only top 100 company by market calculation will be determined as large cap and minimum 80% of your portfolio of large cap fund has to be only in these top 100 stocks. So now the universe has got reduced. The universe is only large cap 100 stocks predominantly. So there is a large research coverage in all of these stocks already. Mm -hmm. Hence, be able to outperform and create a alpha or generate performance is becoming more and more challenging. Plus friends, all of us also realize that the way in which analysis was done last decade has changed significantly thanks to technology, social media, etc. I remember earlier in my career, uh, when let's say a company would declare results, maybe towards the end of the day, some data will come out. Then after the uh, next day, some analysts will create research reports and we'll start uh, utilizing that. Now it's very much on the fly, you know, before the end of that session, next couple of hours on WhatsApp, on uh, some blog, three, four places, the results will be analyzed, already digested, uh, published. And immediately people will start reacting to that. Let's also see social media, how it is impacted. Suppose people are just watching, let's say I've gone for some hypothetically, just like last week I had gone for a, my general basic routine annual medical checkup. Assume there's next to me some uh, large promoter of a listed company sitting and somebody clicks a picture and posts on uh, Twitter that met so-and-so Mr. X. People start wondering, is this promoter of the company gone for some medical test? Is there something wrong with the promoter? Something, anybody can make a reaction to the stock price because of that. Just example I'm sharing, random uh, example. Hmm. Or other way down, let's say some, uh, some result is declared or some event of that company has happened or people are not uh, liking the product. Suppose a new car has got launched and a lot of feedback is coming negative and people are posting on social media Then immediately people are reacting to that in the stock price also. So all of this has changed the way in which analysis is done, especially with large cap companies. So I feel one of the key reasons is that as well. So as the performance is not able to beat the index in a big way, people have started questioning that then why I should pay a higher cost and invest in the active funds instead of let us comp uh, use some of that component to park into low cost passively managed index funds or ETFs. So that is this I feel is one of the important factors to keep in mind why this is happening. Now let's look at a very simple thing structurally why we are investing and what is the example for utilization. I have taken this very simple example of this one, let's say small family, let's say there is a gentleman, Mr. X, he's a doctor, let's say dentist. Okay, dentist, I just made it up because it was a nice picture where all of the people were very nice and smiling. So I said, okay, chalo, in go open, dentist banana. So now just imagine that after the routine expenses, they have about 50,000 worth of disposable income. So how do they plan and save? And what are the goals? Maybe the first goal is keeping, okay, for the children, I need to plan for their, for their education. I'm a dentist, I have a small clinic. Everything is going fine, but maybe in next 10 years, I want to move to a bigger clinic. In next 25, 30 years, I want to plan for a good retirement. So for this kind of an investor profile, you know, why can't we consider low cost passive fund without any complexity too much? You know, plan for your thing, focus on then your profession, focus on reading the latest magazine of your dentist field rather than focusing on what's happening in capital markets or which fund manager is doing what, you know. So in such instances, sometimes what happens is that some people or some financial planning often gets preoccupied with wrong ideas or wrong priorities. Okay, I want to find the best fund manager and 
put them in your portfolio or you know i want to increase return at all cost more than that it's about planning and meeting your goals with reasonable level of certainty rather than trying to beat the market or try and chase the best performer or the highest returns so this is one of the interesting area of behavioral finance or personal finance which we should think about in our own personal lives or if we are advising clients as a as a financial advisor we should look at how we can incorporate this in terms of our suggestions to the clients and hence how you can use passive funds in successfully creating a very unique perspective in your portfolio is by doing this kind of a approach of core and satellite now what i mean by that is that for let's say based on your risk profile and your age you have decided that certain component of your portfolio you want to market into long term core allocation into equity let's say you are 25 30 years of age 35 years of age right now and you say that let's say 60% of my portfolio should be into equities so from that some component can be in core allocation of passively managed funds like a etf and index fund which can every on a periodic basis keep getting allocated without thinking much and keep getting packed into the index fund or etfs and the layer around it or what we call a satellite allocation can be into actively managed funds so there you will try to find some funds which can perform better than the index and generate some kind of alpha you will try to find some differentiated ideas like maybe it could be some a small cap fund or it could be some kind of a tactical call that maybe right now i'm feeling uh, there is a very good potential in let's say one particular theme or some sector let's say for example defense and manufacturing as a sector you feel it's very much powerful right now so maybe for tactically for one two years period you will allocate into some fund which is focused only on this particular theme or this sector and your core allocation will continue in the low cost let's say for example nifty index fund or something of that sort at a low cost and keep accumulating your equity as per your original plan fantastic so, strategy yeah so yes. it's very simple also it's like yes. how you do it many other things in your life ki okay, okay uh, some component can remain um, uh, by default over there and keep adding let's say on a monthly or a periodic basis without thinking much and based on my judgment based on my analytics so based on what i hear from uh, you know uh, outside and learn i can keep taking some tactical calls for the active funds as well so lower cost with the passive allocation i am willing to pay a little higher cost where i have a potential to outperform and generate alpha and creates a tactical allocation as well so this i believe friends can be a useful way whereby you can consider to have passive funds in your portfolio now uh, very often after this uh, point you will ask that uh, fine anil good good point you know we understood that etfs index funds are important piece of the uh, capital markets they are growing uh, globally in a big way even in india it's catching up fine and good use case now how do i select the best fund house very important question that okay now let's say i want to do this core allocation let's say into some particular index fund how should i go about and what type of fund house i should select now i've tried to put down a very simple framework whereby how you can select the fund house or you can select the particular fund where you should allocate your money first and foremost look at the investment concept and try and see if it's aligning with your interest or your vision of the particular funds being allocated let's say as we spoke earlier this core and satellite that you feel that uh, for the next let's say 50 to 20 years i need to allocate 30% of my portfolio into equity which is this low cost core allocation and to balance 20% of my equity allocation i'll retain for this kind of a active call tactical allocation etc so now in this 30% try to select different different investment concepts which can fit into that particular portfolio let's say you might say that simplest form of classic investing is like buy the whole market so let's say in indian context you can have a bell weather index like let's say the nifty 50 or bsc sensex 30 whereby you can feel that it's a representative of the overall industry of the overall economy and i can relate to that investment concept i can buy it or let's say you can have some tweak or some additional layer in that let's say for example within the same 50 stocks of nifty if there is some other strategy applied let's say for example equal weight strategy that same 50 stocks but equally weighted i feel that maybe yeah that aligns with my investment concept better it's like saying that i have a cricket team and instead of keeping a focus on two or three four top players i have a good focus in a well balanced team three four batsmen three four bowlers one star a wicket keeper and all the players are very good fielders likewise let's say same 50 stocks but let me do a equal weight so that all players or all stocks sorry can get good equal chance to perform well that aligns better with my investment concept so depending on your idea you can first and foremost zero down on that investment concept and then you see that the historical uh, characteristics of that particular index how the risks and returns have been 
So you'll get a judgment that what kind of expectation you should have from that investment. Now, after that, you look at the various funds which are available under which mutual fund houses and try to analyze the historical returns profile by looking at what we call as a tracking error and the tracking difference. In very simple terms, what it means, tracking error is a statistical measure. It looks at the daily dispersion of the portfolio. Little bit more simple concept also is what we call as tracking difference. In a very simple way, it just looks at the return of the index and the return of the particular fund. So try and see some portfolio which has as much as possible low tracking error and tracking difference. Sometimes people ask that uh, should we look at the size of the fund? Suppose if it's a very big fund, could it have a problem in investing? Or conversely, suppose some very small fund of only 50 crores is there, whether I should be worried about that. Okay, it's a very small fund. In my view, fririends, for a successful ETF or index fund, the size of the scheme is not so much important, but the size of the underlying investment is important. As long as the underlying that you have selected is large, liquid and transparent, all three put together, LLT, then the size of the fund, typically speaking, will not matter much. It's like saying that, let's, I'll take an example while talking, I just thought about it. Let's mm. say you have a colored pencil and this, because it's a colorful uh, uh, layer, one was blue, one was purple. Let's say you were to paint this on a piece of paper and pencil and there are a lot of pencils available. So let's say you select a blue colored pencil and the size of the pencil of one is small and one is big. You will not focus on the size of the pencil, you will focus on the shade of the blue which you want to select. Correct? Because irrespective of the size, the lead and the darkness of the lead will remain same. So likewise, here, the size of the scheme or the index fund or ETF you'll invest, that is not so important as much as the underlying investment that the fund will take exposure to is important. So in this case, what we discussed, let's say you were planning to invest into a Nifty 50 index fund. You will look at the size of the underlying Nifty 50 stocks and the liquidity that those stocks bring up. So I often say that don't worry too much about the size of the scheme or the fund, but focus on the underlying. With that, then we come to certain qualitative aspects. Many fund house have a very easy way of doing a transaction, all else being same. Let's say, for example, if there is a branch of that particular fund house very close to your home or to your office, or in today's world, you will say, hey, what are you talking about, branch? I mean, I haven't gone to either my bank branch or mutual fund branch since like past five, seven years. But yes, I need a good digital platform. And this particular XYZ fund house has a superb mobile app or, or like a good digital platform where I can easily access my account statement, I can transact seamlessly with a good high level of security and I can have a good way to deal with my investments. And similar to that, ongoing servicing, reporting, very often end of the year, our chartered accountant or ourselves, we are filing our tax returns uh, and you need a lot of some data points, inputs to be reported and all that. So how the ease and convenience of that is, you know, those are the kind of some qualitative aspects. And then how serious is that fund house in this business of passive funds? Do they have a dedicated investment desk? Does that company have a robust long-term track record? What kind of pedigree the, the promoters or the, uh, you know, the parent company brings to the table, you know? So sometimes these are the qualitative aspects which also become very important because all else will remain broadly similar. When you have invested in, let's say, for example, this, this concept of, now we're coming to the concepts, I'm just repeating. Let's say you select the concept that, okay, Nifty 50 equal weight index as a concept. I like it. I am comfortable with the expected risk and returns. I've seen that the tracking error and tracking difference is lowest in XYZ fund house. Now I'll see the qualitative aspects. Yeah, okay, that fund house is a branch next to my office. Plus it has a very good digital platform. They are good in servicing. They have a long-term track record. That particular fund house or that group has been in existence for 100 years in India or whatever, 50 years, large uh, time period. And they have a dedicated investment desk to manage passive funds, which means my investment, even if I'm giving 5 lakh rupees, 2,000 rupees SIP monthly or whatever might be 20, like, uh, 1,000 crores, it will be very focused way of managing my area. Yes, this is the fund out I will select. So friends, this is a good way of combining quantitative and qualitative aspects and deciding and selecting your fund house. So with that, I would like to now summarize and conclude how like we have gone through the discussion, uh, whether uh, you know there is a way how we select uh, which kind of funds to use, some active funds, some passive funds. We have seen passive funds in the global markets are growing very fast. Even in India, there is a huge catch up in the past few years. How you can use it as a core and satellite for creating your portfolio in a good way, whereby you can reduce your cost also by the core allocation in low cost passive funds. And you can have a good tactical satellite allocation also, which can give the potential to outperform as well. And then in a simple framework, how you can try to select the best fund house for your investments. So with that, 
I would like to hand over back to Sai. Sometimes I get this uh, as this question, standard question that can we be in touch? Yeah, sure. If you can either reach out to me through uh, Sai's website or through his social media channel or on his YouTube, or you can follow me on directly. My, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, through Money Purse, uh, I'd be very happy to be in touch, basically, or try and help in whatever way by sharing market information or something like that. And for Fantastic me, it's uh, last slide, which is my disclaimer side, but just I mean, otherwise, yes. I know it's you really are very responsible uh, uh, investors, uh, but it's my duty, uh, certain standard disclaimers, uh, because it's a very selected audience for which these sessions are conducted from our side. So, with that, thank you very much. I hope it's useful. And uh, on Money Purse website, uh, you always get very useful content. A uh, lot of your queries are getting answered. So, I do notice and I realize many queries will are coming up. We'll try our best to respond to each and every of them. Feel free to keep posting your queries and keep following uh, Money Purse for more such interesting sites. Back to you, uh, uh, Sai. Fantastic session, Anil. I'm sure this session will help a lot. Many of the viewers will not have clarity on how to put a strategy. The core and satellite uh, strategy which you shared, I really liked it. I'm sure that will give a lot of clarity. Like many people will get confused. But once they start investing in index funds, when they see some alpha happening in mid and small cap, they feel they have missed out some, something like that. So that part also you have addressed. Yes. Now they can actually uh, do follow this core and satellite strategy and core part they can keep it in index uh, the satellite part they can use it in either small caps or any theme they Perfect. want to play fantastic thank you thanks again for giving us this time thank you very much it really appreciate really wonderful thank you guys uh, keep following money Pearls. i personally uh, got to know money Pearls for quite some time back we, we had met uh, with sai krishna in in hyderabad at a, at a conference of cfa society india a couple of years back and uh, i uh, besides youtube uh, i follow uh, sai, uh, the, your channel uh, your content on uh, this uh, Instagram also, and I find it very engaging sometimes. Uh, you know, later evening I'm watching you are there to share some of the latest insights. It's very encouraging. So thanks for that. Uh, really appreciate. Thank you. Thanks, Anil. Okay. Cheers. Bye bye. Now we session matlab no major part core and dalay satellite strategy ede the na do. Then I will give brief ka telilo summary shesha no. And then the chala important strategy. Chala mand index fund sanga no matlab double ede index fund lo peta sir le. Then te index category ne ignore shesha sundar. Alla ka kunda. See man ki sebi recategorization taro the large cap fund seve to na. Chala mandi mutual fund industry equity fund seyum lo ni major part to large cap funds lo nonto the. I large cap funds actually index ne beat chale ho. In the gente see sebi recategorization Categorization Tarata, top hundred stocks on eighty percent of the portfolio allocate Chial Kabati. So major alpha create Chiranki in the Muni in Chesavarante, hundred stocks away than a top hundred beyond daily invest Chagal Gavaru. If you do while Chetul Katesna type of the fund managers, index and beach head on the large cap category, Chala Chala custom. Salan case, index and beach chill and up large cap category invest shells and answer on the in that case, Manu index category invest shell. No, see ever the volatility of Dun Gundar, our part of the portfolio, the stable. Part of the portfolio, then index loan and either 30 percent can 40 percent can 50 percent can based on your risk appetite. Allocate chess, the allocation part is another than major core part of the portfolio. Can the manunchi than long term can continue chess, index part is another than long term continue chess, satellite portfolio. See, satellite portfolio in and see, conisala man opportunity IT sector la convert to see put man choose in a day IT stocks baga character, pharma stocks baga character. So, IT sector loan double additional lump sum amount. Alan Temple index fund in Vashe Sabadalu, play check elegant at the IT sector Lamsam in Vashe Chile, the SIP in Vashe Chu, Pharma sector attracted Guna the Capitaka Lamsam in Vashe Chile, the SIP in Vashe Chu, Leda mid and small caps. I especially mid and small caps lo recent time lo ba correction chesam kada and even recent time lo meer observe chestuntaru index perugutundi but actually mid and small caps man portfolio lo stocks paragaledu dan reason endi mid and small caps lo peddaga momentum ledu ilanti scenarios vastai ee scenario time lo ne manaki attractive valuations lo mid and small cap stocks aithe dorukutunte anamata so alanti case lo ni mana aa period lo ni either funds lo invest cheyalana stocks lo invest cheyalana aa category lo ni manu satellite part of the portfolio invest chesi eppudaithe vaatlo ni significant alpha vachestadu ante euphoria ekku Ante Pratokulu Manki Sandra Kanman Pratyokalu no ideal investor. This is the best time to invest in IT and chip parlor. That is the time to book 
ప్రాఫిట్ ఫ్రమ్ దట్ సెక్టర్ అనమాట సో ఆ సెక్టర్ నుంచి ప్రాఫిట్ బుక్ చేసుకుని వేరే సెక్టర్లోకి మూవ్ అవుతాం అనమాట సో ఈ శాటిలైట్ పార్ట్లో ఏంటంటే ప్రాఫిట్ బుకింగ్ అనేది జరుగుతుంది ఇక్కడ కోర్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద పోర్ట్ఫోలియోలో ప్రాఫిట్ బుకింగ్ చేయాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు అండ్ అలాగే లో ఎక్స్పెన్స్ లో రిస్క్ వాలటైలిటీ ఉంటుంది బట్ సి ఫండ్ మేనేజర్ రిస్క్ అని ఇలాంటి రిస్క్ ఏది ఉండదు ఆ కోర్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద పోర్ట్ఫోలియోని ఇలా మెయింటైన్ చేయగలిగినట్టయితే ఐ థింక్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద బెస్ట్ స్ట్రాటజీ సో ఎవరైనా వాళ్ళు మ్యూచువల్ ఫండ్ పోర్ట్ఫోలియోని ఎలోకేట్ చేసుకోవాలనుకున్నట్టయితే ఈ స్ట్రాటజీని ఫాలో అవ్వచ్చు మీరు రిస్క్ ఎప్పటైట్ ఆధారంగా ఇండెక్స్ ఎంత ఎలోకేట్ చేయాలన్నది పర్సంటేజ్ డిపెండ్ అయి ఉంటుంది యంగ్ పీపుల్ అనుకోండి టెన్ ట్వంటీ పర్సెంట్ వుడ్ బీ ఇనఫ్ బట్ ఏజ్ పెరిగే కొద్దీ ఆటోమేటిక్గా మనం రిస్క్ తగ్గించుకుందాం అనుకుంటాం కాబట్టి ఆ టైంలో ఇండెక్స్ కేటగిరీ పర్సంటేజ్ ఎలోకేషన్ ఏదైతే ఉంటుందో దాన్ని ఎన్హాన్స్ చేసుకుంటే వెళ్తే సరిపోతుంది అనమాట సో దిస్ ఈజ్ వాట్ నాకు మొత్తం సెషన్లో బాగా నచ్చిన స్ట్రాటజీ ఇది సో మీకు సమరైజ్ చేసినట్టు హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అవుతుంది అని సమరైజ్ చేశాను అండ్ అలాగే మీలో ఎవరికైనా మ్యూచువల్ ఫండ్స్ అంటే ఏంటో క్లారిటీ లేదు బట్ మ్యూచువల్ ఫండ్లో ఇన్వెస్ట్ చేయాలని అనుకున్నారు అనుకోండి దాని గురించి తెలుసుకుని ఇన్వెస్ట్ చేస్తే బెస్ట్ కదా సో మ్యూచువల్ ఫండ్స్ రిలేటెడ్గా మ్యూచువల్ ఫండ్స్ అంటే ఏంటి అండ్ మ్యూచువల్ ఫండ్స్లో ఎలా ఇన్వెస్ట్ చేయాలి అన్న దాని మీద కంప్లీట్ డీటెయిల్డ్ ప్లేలిస్ట్ ఏదైతే ఉన్నదో ఎంటైర్ కోర్స్ని మన ఛానల్లో నేను ఆల్రెడీ అప్లోడ్ చేశాను ఈక్విడి డెట్ అక్రాస్ కేటగిరీస్ గురించి ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేస్తూ ఆ ప్లేలిస్ట్ మీకు ఇక్కడ తమ్మినాయి కనబడుతుంది కదా ఎండ్ కార్డ్లో ఉంచుతాను ఆ ప్లేలిస్ట్ ఫాలో అయినట్టయితే మీరు ఎంటైర్ కోర్స్ ద్వారా మీరు మ్యూచువల్ ఫండ్స్ గురించి నేర్చుకుని మీ ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్ డెసిషన్ అయితే మీరు తీసుకోవచ్చు అనమాట అండ్ ఈ వీడియోలో మేము ఏదైతే ఎఫోర్ట్ పెట్టాం ఎఫోర్ట్ హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అయిపోయి వీడియో లైక్ చేయనట్టయితే వీడియోని తప్పకుండా లైక్ చేయండి అండ్ మీ ఫ్రెండ్స్ అండ్ ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్కి వీడియో హెల్ప్ఫుల్ అవుతుంది అంటే వాళ్ళకి షేర్ చేయండి అండ్ మీరు అయితే ఫస్ట్ టైం మన మనీ పర్స్ ఛానల్కి వచ్చి ఛానల్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ చేయనట్టయితే ఇక ఛానల్ లోగో మీద క్లిక్ చేసి ఛానల్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ చేస్తూ పక్కన బెల్లైకాన్లోని ఆల్ నోటిఫికేషన్స్ యాక్టివేట్ చేసుకోండి నేను సాయి కృష్ణ పత్రి మరొక ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ వీడియోతో మేము ముందుకు వస్తాను టిల్ దెన్ బాయ్ బై టేక